Hey guys, Dodge Landisman here. Want to give you an update from LA on the latest with the Danny Masterson trial. Before we get into that, I want to address a few different things. Some housekeeping. One, which is important, I want to address an inaccuracy that I made in the last video. And it was an unintentional inaccuracy because I, I didn't say what I was actually trying to say. I said that Danny Masterson was declared not guilty in terms of his relationship with Jane Doe 3. That is not true. I was looking for the right word, it was hung jury, and what I meant to say is he wasn't declared guilty. Completely different than being declared not guilty. All the difference in the world. So in my head, I knew, obviously, that he was not declared officially not guilty. That's, that's not what I thought. But I conveyed it, not only in a sloppy, but incorrect manner. And I think as a reporter, the first thing you have to do is reflexively own your mistakes and admit that you messed up. Now, did I mess up to the degree where the information was blatantly incorrect after that or the rest of the details? No, but I still messed up and gave an inaccurate bit of information for that, which I apologize. If you saw the most recent video, I also tripped up being new to covering court and new to this very specific terminology with versus without prejudice. Prejudice. With prejudice means that the case is dismissed and is dismissed for good. And I said the opposite. I flipped my withs and my withs out. Now, as not that it needs an explanation, but the reason I got confused is because with prejudice would imply that, at least if somebody knows basic English language, with prejudice would apply that there is prejudice and therefore the person should be tried again. In fact, that's not what it is. That with prejudice means the case is dismissed once and for all. Uh, so I was, I flipped that around, but hopefully you could see why, because it, it seems odd, that terminology and that phrasing, which is new to me. But you have to get your ducks in a row, and I, I should have had that uh, settled before I went on. So I wanted to address that. Uh, some separate fun stuff, way more silly, less important. About three commenters didn't like my unmade bed. Uh, certainly get it. I hate making my bed. Another commenter said, well, why don't you just get, didn't you, why, don't, why don't you get the hotel made to just make up your bed. Well, I have a do not disturb sign on my hotel room door so my bed doesn't get made. I'm, I'm a single bachelor. Now, I don't understand why people feel the need to make their beds. I want to get into my bed. Why do I need to put in more effort to get into my bed and unmake my bed? Therefore, I should never make my bed in the first place. But I, I could go on a 10 minute long comedic diatribe about that. And obviously I will not bore you with that. Uh, but wanted wanted to address that, uh, but it was good advice because it's distracting to have a bunch of blankets lying around. And I'll make sure to, to center the backgrounds a little more. And this is even less important, but uh, somebody said to me, nobody should ever wear the colors. Looking at the colors I was wearing today, uh, this is this is a pretty loud tie. I'm, I'm not going to argue. And feel free to comment on that. I am a vintage head, which means that I love clothes from the 19. 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, and have real articles of clothing from that era. This jacket's from the 50s, and this tie, hand-painted, is from 1947. Uh, so comment if you like it. I, I'd imagine, most of you won't care about my style one way or another, but it, I'd imagine for the people that do, half of them will think this is way too loud and ridiculous, and the other half will say, hey, I kind of like your flair, and your clothes make me want to watch you, and it's appealing to the visual eye, and it's kind of cool and quirky and different. So I'd be curious to have a little comments battle on that, but it's all in good fun. And, and as somebody who's a reporter, guys, feel free to not hold back. If you want to be totally mean, if you want to say, I hate your pasty ginger face and your yellow smoker's teeth, feel free. I, I can handle the good and the bad and the ugly. And, and uh, you know what? The, the, the saucy comments... I think it's fun kind of having this little uh, opening conversation with all of you guys. So the saucy comments kind of help roll that along and, and uh, it kind of shows the more humorous side of me. So keep them coming. If you want to be mean, be mean, but most importantly, much love to 96% of you who left nothing but but sweet comments. I, I appreciate it. But the, the, the critical comments, some of them were just critical. Most of them were just indicating to me, well, this is how you could be better. And hey, I'm a new YouTuber. I'm getting into all of this. I'm figuring out as I go along. So constructive criticism or just mean criticism, throw it my way, no problem. So wanted to give a little update as to what happens in the trial. Uh, I'll, I'll start with, with the opening conversation about dismissing 
uh, with or without prejudice. And I'll, I'll just conclude that the defense did not get what they wanted. And Danny Masterson, at least as of now, and that's the key word, at least as of now, can be tried for his involvement with Jane Doe 3. But interestingly enough, Judge Olmedo said down the road, she is open to having Cohen issue motions to try to get that case finally dismissed forever and ever. So that was the big difference. But largely, the defense won because no, that's not going to happen before sentencing. And it's going to be a very uphill battle to even get any of those motions heard. But she left the door open. Uh, although, again, open just a crack. So I'll, 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 I wrote down a lot of what they wrote. I'll start with Cohen speaking to Judge Olmedo. I do think there's an issue by dismissing this without prejudice. When we talk about interest of justice, speedy trial, etc., given the two trials, somewhat given the two trials and somewhat similar results, what are you talking about? No indication of new evidence, and there's no indication of new evidence. And uh, uh, ADA Assistant District Attorney, Deputy District Attorney Mueller shoots back. Two trials with similar results? I strongly disagree. In interest of justice, with the possibility of a new trial and until judgment is cast, we ask dismissal to be done without prejudice. So he made a very forceful and effective argument. And Olmedo, again, she does so much research. She was talking about how she researched five different court cases and she kept going back and forth well this one case did dismiss it without prejudice this one case didn't and she literally went back and forth about five times so she's a very reasoned well-researched judge which you got to respect her for that uh but of course after researching all these different results of these court cases she kind of split the baby but again things ended up being far more favorable to the prosecution than to the defense so I thought, I thought that was interesting. Um, and then another aspect is the sentencing. There was a big effort to get the sentencing delayed. And this delay happened very, very last minute. The sentencing, it was decided, would not get delayed. So I will see you, as will Aaron, as will a bevy of other people involved in SPTV. We'll all see you in LA on September 7th. But boy, did Cohen try hard to create that delay in the trial. And what he said is he found all this new evidence with the appellate division looking at the appeal process for Danny Masterson. He said he's found all this evidence would, that would completely change the trial and completely change things. It looks like the real reason he doesn't want the trial to be delayed is because he wants this to be over as quickly as possible because it might be a Scientology connection. The longer it takes for Masterson to get sentenced, the more beans he could spill about Scientology. So there's a very interesting relationship. And a, a few other things to look at for the, the next uh, court date, obviously the sentencing will be the big one. We'll, we'll be looking at the impact statements as well. From what I know as of now, Jane Doe 3 is able to testify. There was some back and forth as to whether or not she would be able to testify. The good news is that she can testify. Uh, but that might get changed, so that's not 1,000% positive. But I would say close to it. But in terms of the sentencing, Mueller said, uh, uh, Deputy District Attorney Mueller said, the case is ready for sentencing. All I know is that they're still evaluating. Like, who cares? And then Holly, who's on the, on the uh, defense team, said, I said to Anson, who's on the uh, prosecuting team, I said to, I said to Anson, we want to push sentencing. I did not say anything as I was working with the appellate. Appellate needs to go through transcripts. So she was saying this is why she never asked for a delay a month ago, because that was the argument Mueller was making. Well, why, why do you just ask for a sentencing delay the moment he was declared guilty on two counts? But she said, oh, well, look at all this, all this stuff in the transcript just popped up. Uh, this is a life case. This is her talking. One I propose be permitted to be heard uh, at a later date. And sorry for the pauses. I was looking at what I've written here to see if there's anything interesting to 
uh, read aloud. Not not much. It was Olmedo essentially again going back and forth with all of these uh, different cases. But that 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 was the big thing. Is all about. Uh, Sentencing, and again, Mueller made a lot of arguments uh, saying that in terms of uh, with prejudice or without prejudice, he made a lot of arguments saying if there's some procedural issues, that should not be the fault of society. The society is still expected to have a fair and reasonable trial. So that was a very effective argument he made that I think ultimately did win him the day. Uh, so some interesting developments, a few things that weren't discussed, cameras weren't discussed, we thought there might be discussion about the allowance of media, that was not a topic. But further uh, uncoverances of testimonials, pre-trial, that wasn't really talked about because Aaron made a point about this. A lot of people give out character testimonials and might even lie about it, thinking that they were just private, and Ashton Kutcher of That 70s Show might be one of those people. They assumed it was private, but as Aaron mentioned, if you want to look up this case, the Megan the Stallion, uh, that is not. And so a lot of these uh, statements by people who they didn't they didn't want to have the statements be made public, and they didn't think they would be made public, all of a sudden it became public. Uh, so, and it's apparently a very similar, a lot of similar people, the same people are working on both cases. Uh, so you can kind of expect that. So that'll be interesting to watch out for on September 7th. Uh, I'd say I'd say there's going to be a lot of shock and awe for Ashton Kutcher. That's very entirely possible. He might look really bad after this situation. Uh, so yeah, that's that's been the rundown. Essentially, uh, Masterson, at, as of this moment, can be tried for Jane Doe three, and the sentencing, despite the best efforts of Philip Cohen remains on September 7th. So those are the big things. And uh, again, wanted to thank all of you guys for your support. Raised a really nice amount for GoFundMe. Was able to pay for the entire trip. And I have a third trip coming up on September 7th. Uh, so thank you. I, I, I can't thank you enough. And uh, it really means, means the world to me. And of course, there's going to be a million back and forth trips that I'm going to have to go on. So if you want to continue to uh, donate, I, I still request that you do, but even just a comment or a like, or even you just watching really means the world. But just wanted to thank you for your previous donations because they, they paid for the tickets to get out here, wouldn't have been able to afford it otherwise. Uh, so can't thank you enough for that. And uh, yeah, so a lot, a lot happening on September 7th. I will see you there. And again, thank you. Thank you all for your support. Thank you for all your patience. Hey, thanks for the criticism. It makes me a better reporter. It makes me better at, at, at doing YouTube. And one last thing to look out for, as I as I mentioned, that is, I would, it would be helpful to get more with the GoFundMe because my travels won't just end with the Danny Masterson trial. There's an obstruction of justice trial coming up, and of course, I'm sure Scientology doesn't want to get to that. And I will keep you posted on the obstruction of justice because I wonder if I should submit my experience as evidence. I'm sure, as you already know, I was a news anchor who got fired for posting a factual and reading on air a factual piece about Lisa Marie Presley and that she was prepared to testify against one of the victims in the Danny Masterson trial. And Scientology threatened a lawsuit and got me fired. Now, I would argue that that's obstruction of justice because you're interfering with the with freedom of speech and the freedom of media and preventing free information from coming out to the public and thereby denying a public good. I, I feel like that's obstruction of justice if there ever was one. Of course, they didn't want any credibility for anybody who was opposed to Danny Masterson. They didn't want it, this trial to get any attention. And look, it, it's interesting. This trial has been in the press in Los Angeles, locally and in, in Variety and Rolling Stone and some notable stuff, but it hasn't been huge news on Fox News or NBC or CNN. And I can tell you from inside experience, Scientology might have a lot of financial influence in that regard. Uh, the scripts are written by CNN. There was only surface level stuff about Masterson that was very throwaway, if anything. Uh, so it, it really does speak volumes about who's really behind the scenes and what gets covered and what doesn't. So this stuff is really important. I feel like, who knows, that might be entered into evidence, but I'm certainly going there. And it'll be interesting to see what happens with Danny Masterson. This is for somebody who knows the law. What's happening with Danny Masterson's case in Canada? Because can you be tried if you're sitting in jail? I don't know. If anybody knows a lot, if you want to answer that to me, 
Let me know if the answer is yes, then I will see you in Toronto and I will camp out there for a long time as well. But again, love all of you guys. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the donations. It has helped me out tremendously. I'm in a much more comfortable financial state than I was before. And I feel like this is the right decision. I have a lot of good people telling me that this was the risk worth taking as financially insecure as it might be and that I have something worth fighting for. And, and that's all I kind of needed to hear. So I feel like I have a new lease on life and I'm, I'm on a mission where I could really speak to some truths of power. And I, I feel like that's what I was put on this earth to do. So thank you all for watching. If you want to donate to the GoFundMe, I'm going to prostitute myself one last time. Uh, you can see the link on YouTube as well as this video description. But again, you don't even have to donate if you just want to say hi or like or just watch. That means the world too. But thank you. You sure, you sure know how to make a guy feel good about himself, especially after the, the debacle, after getting fired. I, I felt just the opposite. So I, I am only here because of all of you and just want to send out your love and thank you for your support. Appreciate it.